So for this part of the video, we have to look at what exactly is a carbohydrate. A carbohydrate is something we, you know, as a, as a person, you might say that quite often. You might tell your friends, oh, I have to lay off the carbs. I have to eat more carbohydrate. Uh, I need more carbohydrate for energy. If you are an athlete, your coach may tell you, you need to eat more carbohydrates just before a marathon. So the word carbohydrate itself is used quite often. But how do we define what exactly is a carbohydrate? Because here's the thing. We have so many different types of carbohydrates. If I say the word carbohydrate, you might think of grain. Some students may think of sugars. Some people may think of rice or noodles. Some people may think of maple syrup, which is also another type of carbohydrate as well. Which incidentally, I just had maple syrup the other day with my pancakes for the first time and wasn't really a pleasant experience. I'm just going to... Uh, stick with butter and the conventional sugar syrup instead of, you know, maple syrup. They don't really like the taste that much, surprisingly. I was so looking forward to it as well. But anyway, back, you know, coming out from my misadventures with maple syrup. Um, you have so many different types of carbohydrates. You have uh, grains, sugars, rice, maple syrup, and many others, by the way. Bread is also, uh, bread also contains uh, a form of carbohydrate. So, and they are so diverse, they are so different from one another. They come in many different shapes and form, and dare I say it, taste. Of course, most, most of the time, the regular carbohydrates have a sweet taste to them. So then comes the question, how do we classify the carbohydrates? So before we understand the classification of carbohydrates, or putting these carbohydrates into different groups or so, we must first ask ourselves the question, what makes something a carbohydrate? Now, a carbohydrate must contain three main elements, which is carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. The next important thing that we must understand is the ratio of carbon, hydrogen to oxygen is one carbon to two hydrogen to one oxygen, basically, or the general formula is CH2O. That's why the word carbo is C, hydrate is H2O. That's where the name comes from. An example of a carbohydrate is glucose, C6H12O6. As you can see, the ratio of carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen in glucose is 6 to 12 to 6. And if you simplify the numbers, it will be 1 carbon to 2 hydrogen to 1 oxygen. A very important thing to note is this ratio is not fixed. It does not exactly have to be 1 carbon to 2 hydrogen to 1 oxygen but it's kind of a general rule that helps us understand what a carbohydrate is or what constitutes a carbohydrate. So, classification of carbohydrates. To try to attempt to classify these carbohydrates, which are elements made up of carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen, with a ratio of almost always one carbon to two hydrogen to one oxygen, we put them into three main groups. And the three main groups are as follows, monosaccharides, disaccharides, and polysaccharides. In an attempt to understand what these terms mean. So the term saccharide just basically refers to sugar, or sugar molecule. And when you see the word monosaccharide, it just basically means one sugar molecule, disaccharide, two sugar molecules joined together. Polysaccharide means many sugar molecules joined together or a repeating unit of sugar molecules. If you looked at the previous lecture on the biological molecule playlist, you would have seen that I talked about monomers and polymers. So, monosaccharides are monomers in carbohydrates. Polysaccharides are basically polymers in carbohydrates. We understand that carbohydrates can exist in these three main forms. And monosaccharides can be converted into disaccharides to polysaccharides and vice versa. So without wasting any time, let's look at the first group of carbohydrates referred to as monosaccharides. So monosaccharides are also referred to as sugars. And the reason why we call them sugar is because when you put them into your mouth, you have that sweet sensation. Our tongues can actually detect them as something sweet. And the formula for monosaccharides are CH2O, N, where N can be any numbers, by the way. 
And monosaccharides themselves are classified into three subgroups, triose sugar, pentose sugar, and hexose sugar. When you see the word ose at the back, if you notice ose, O-S-E at the back, ose is just corresponding to something sugar related. So uh, we don't actually have to memorize the chemical formulas for triose, pentose, and hexose sugars. Our main concern will be the hexose sugars, which is a monosaccharide made up of six carbons. And the formula for hexose sugars are C6H12O6. And you might look at that and go, hey, I know that C6H12O6, that's glucose. So glucose is a hexose sugar then. Well, yes and no. Glucose is a hexose sugar, yes, but glucose is not the only hexose sugar in existence. There are many different types of hexose sugars as well which is a bit of a surprise for some of the students because they always think that C6H12O6 is exclusively for glucose. But it's not. So if you look at hexose sugar, C6H12O6, it is divided into glucose, fructose, and galactose. Here's the extremely interesting thing. They all have the same molecular formula. Glucose, fructose, and galactose are all made up of 6-carbon, 12 hydrogen and 6 oxygen. So what makes them different then? The reason why glucose, fructose and galactose are different is because of their structural formulae or how they are built basically or how the carbon, hydrogen and oxygen are arranged. Now glucose can exist in a linear form as I'm drawing it right here. So good news is you do not have to memorize this formula. But most of the time, glucose in nature does not prefer to exist as a linear form because it's less stable. And molecules, because of entropy, they are trying to be more stable. So how does the glucose molecule try to be more stable? They decide to form a ring structure. The ring structure is an attempt of the linear molecule to be more stable. When you're drawing the ring structure of the glucose molecule, as I'm showing it to you right now, the numbering of the carbon atom is important. So we always start numbering the carbon from the right-hand side. So the carbon on the right is carbon 1, and you go through a clockwise direction. Carbon 2, carbon 3, carbon 4, 5, and at the top is carbon 6. And it's important to know that carbon 1 and carbon 5 are linked together by an oxygen atom, not a carbon. So just be careful when you're drawing the carbon, uh, just be careful when you're drawing the ring structure of the glucose molecule. Always start by drawing the carbons first, carbon 1 to 6, and then link carbon 5 and 1 with an oxygen atom. That's your base. The next thing you should do is you should draw the OH groups. And the OH groups is also fixed as well. For this glucose molecule, the OH group at carbon 1, it faces downwards, carbon 2 downwards, carbon 3 upwards, carbon 4 downwards, and carbon 6 upwards. Carbon 5 will not have an OH group. Next, what you want to do is, then you put in the other important group, which is hydrogen. Then you just fill in the hydrogen in the other parts as well. Glucose, interestingly, can actually exist in two ring forms. Number one, it can, it can exist as something called alpha glucose, and it can also exist as something called beta glucose. Now, What's the difference between alpha glucose and beta glucose? Good news over here is you just have to focus on carbon number one. For alpha glucose, the OH group is facing downwards, but for beta glucose, the OH group is facing upwards. Also, when you, if in the exam they're asking you to draw out a alpha glucose or beta glucose, what you can do is you can draw out a simplified form over here. So the simplified form is just basically putting in the general shape, the backbone, which is in black, and putting in the OH groups. If you do this for the exam, this will be sufficient. So the choice is yours, whether you want to draw a more complicated version on the left or you want to draw a less complicated version on the right. Both answers or both drawings are valid during the exam. So you might want to, and of course, as a reminder, so look at the OH groups. For alpha glucose and beta glucose, their only main difference is the OH group at carbon number one. Alpha glucose has the OH group facing downwards at carbon number one. Beta glucose has the OH group facing upwards at carbon number one. Of course, some students will be um, perplexed 
they might be thinking, okay, the difference is not so significant between alpha glucose and beta glucose. They look very much the same with the exception of the OH group at carbon number one. It, it seems like a trivial piece of information, yet it can actually affect the molecules when we are looking at them in their polymer form. So, as a summary, what you can see here is I'm throwing out the hexose sugars, C6H12O6. You have an alpha glucose, beta glucose, and what I'm throwing right here is also a fructose molecule, which is also a type of hexose sugar as well. Now, even though I'm throwing out a slightly detailed version of a fructose molecule, you do not have to memorize its OH groups. You have to know the general structure of a fructose molecule. Fructose has a rather pentagon-like shape compared to alpha glucose and beta glucose, which have more hexagon shapes. Even though fructose has a pentagon shape, it is still a hexose sugar. It still is C6H12O6. And on the right hand most side, you also have a galactose molecule, which is uh, the OH groups are quite different as well. So interestingly, what you can see here is you have four types of hexose sugars. All of them have the same molecular formula of C6H12O6, yet they are all arranged quite differently.